Senate hearings uh, begin today with leaders meeting to discuss both Dodd-Frank and the $2 billion botched J.P. Morgan trade. Joining us from Washington is Senator uh, Bob Corker, who serves on the Senate Banking Committee. We, unfortunately, Senator, we had uh, Senator Merkley on, and, and Larry Lindsay really had a good question, but we didn't get to it. And you're the wrong, I don't know, maybe you're not the wrong guy to ask this. Um, three years without a budget, why don't you guys do what you're supposed to do instead of you know, trying to worry about what J.P. Morgan's doing? Well, I couldn't re agree more about the budget. It's been like 1,118 days, and uh, about. you know we haven't had a budget. It's it's incredible. I, I have quit voting for all spending bills until we pass a budget, and I th I wish everyone in the Senate would join me in that, and then I think we would actually pass one. But it's back only, to Larry. Uh, but isn't it only 51? How many votes do you need? You don't need the, the Senate doesn't need 60 votes, right? No, that's right. And, and for what it's worth, again, I think we ought to all quit voting for any spending bills until we pass a budget. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. We're spending three and a half trillion dollars of your money and we have no guideline. We spent over ten trillion dollars since we passed a budget. So, look, uh, we're on the same page. Couldn't agree more. I think it's a total embarrassment for the greatest, quote, deliberative body in the world not to have the ability to pass a budget. But let me get back to the hearings. Um, Look, I'm very sympathetic to people saying that Congress shouldn't be involved, and I don't think Congress should be involved in the inner workings of J.P. Morgan. I couldn't agree more. But what's happening right now is Washington is very involved. The regulators are hunkered down. The phone lines are, are going hot between them as they're talking about what to do. I think the administration is semi-panic-stricken right now because they realize the American people could well wake up and believe that the last three years has been nothing but a bad dream. I mean, if you think about what may happen with the uh, Supreme Court and the constitutionality of the health care bill in June, the overpromising of Dodd-Frank, which some people could say, and that's one of the reasons I want to have this hearing, some people could say have actually made our banking system more risky. The big guys have just gotten bigger. The small community banks around our country have been crushed as they have more compliance officers and lenders. We've run up $5 trillion in debt, and we have absolutely nothing to show for it. And Americans are pitted one against another. And so I think what's happening, and so Larry, I, I'm sympathetic to some of the comments you've made before, but the regulators may seek over the course of the next several months to prove a negative. And I think in the process, what we could do under the existing scenario where we have these highly complex organizations, where even a Jamie Dimon, uh, who I actually respect, doesn't know what's happening within, within his institution, we may end up in a situation where we actually make these highly complex organizations even more risky by causing the Volcker rule to be something different than it was intended in the first place. So I think these hearings are very important, not, not to get into the inner workings of a trade that probably is a blip on the radar screen and maybe less than two or three months in earnings, but I think it's a, an educational process, and I think many in the Senate may for the first time understand that our banking system is far more complex than they ever thought during the Dodd-Frank debate. Senator, I, I agree with you completely. I commend you on your, uh, on your budget uh, rule. What I found interesting is you're going to have someone there from the SEC and someone there from the CFTC. So here you have a bill where you're supposed to streamline regulation, and yet what yeah. you've done in this just this <laughs> one area is create right. two separate regulators, some of which do some things and some of which do others. Isn't well, that, you should know, the Senate yeah. investigate itself on that? Yeah, look, I mean, Larry, I couldn't agree more that if we were really going to simplify and create proper regulation in our country, you wouldn't have the CFTC and the SEC. I said that early on. I mean, the very first step you'd take is to combine them into one entity. But today's hearing, Larry, is going to be nothing. I mean, I wouldn't even send CN CNBC cameras into the room. It's going to be a show and tell and will have no impact whatsoever, in my opinion, on looking into the complexity of the banking system. It's going to be more of a chest beating about the things that they've accomplished over the last several months. On June 6th, when we actually have the other banking regulators in, there may be some education that takes place there, and then, and then the hearing we have after that. But, but look, you're right. I mean, we punted most of the tough decisions, Larry, and we never really had the, you know, when, when elitists take over Washington, 
there, there's no intellectual curiosity. Everybody already knows the answer. We never really had the debate about uh, Glass-Steagall. We never had the debate about the bear model, which would be making sure that the FDIC component of a bank holding company only takes deposits and makes loans, and the other pieces are self, uh, separately capitalized and doing. We never had debates about what kind of financial system we wanted to have in America. And what we did, we just had this, this sort of smothering of the entire system with all these 2,400 pages. Believe me, when people get into some of the hiring practices that have been mandated as we move along, they're going to realize uh, this bill has a lot in it that they never had any idea. But in the process, again, um, we never really had an appropriate debate, in my opinion, in our country right. about what our financial system ought the, to be. The, the proof of the failure of the bill is that the share of banking assets in too big to fail institutions has actually gone up since it passed. Right? If, look, when you, when you overregulate, it happens all the time. When you have these massive regulations that, again, are crushing community banks around our country, what happens is the big guys just get bigger. I have been saying this for years. The big guys just get bigger when you create these massive regulations. And so, you know, again, I, what I want to have, this to me is not about J.P. Morgan. I mean, but what it will do, I think, is allow people on the Senate Banking Committee, by the way, for the first time, to sit down and get up under the hood and understand about portfolio hedging and do we really want these institutions uh, to go without any type of hedging? I don't think in their present form that's what we want them to do. Except so again, I, hope, I think this is going to be a good thing. And by the way, regulators are watching. Regulators are affected by these things and regulators over the next several months are going to be putting in place rules and okay, regulations. They're going to have a huge... Go ahead. Senator, what, what, what? Just one last question, we got to go. But okay. if I ask Senator Harry Reid, why don't you have a budget? He, you say you want one. Would he have an answer for me? What would he say? He would say that the Republicans won't raise any taxes, so we can't have a budget. Is, is that the answer? Because you no, only no, no. Because, What's look, the answer? Me, what, yeah. what would say Harry Reid tell me about why there is a I do not. Look, I, you I, haven't I heard him say you, your audience isn't used to me making partisan comments, but I will just say this. I do not think they want to put any cards out on the table. Until the not a single Democrat voted for any budget, not a single one, not the President's budget, not the Ryan budget, not the Toomey budget, didn't vote for a single one. And remember, they have a majority on the budget committee. They can pass any budget out they want. They have 53 senators. They can pass any budget they wish on the Senate floor with 51 votes. I, again, I think it's a total embarrassment for our get, nation. You know what? I'm gonna, what? Nobody knows this, but uh, no New York Times readers knows that. Will you write a? Can I just suggest a column for you? On, did column? you hear that? They have 53 Democrats on the budget. Yep. They, they could pass a budget right now. Will you just? inform the New York Times, because they don't know this, because it would never be in the normal part of the paper, but yeah. will you just inform them in one of your columns, all the New York Times readers, that there no. is no budget? So, I Joe, let me tell you what I would happen that. after that. Then, then you'd, have to re you'd have to reconcile the two budgets after that, the Ryan budget and right. the democratically passed budget. But then, then you'd have to get into the tough work that people hire us to do. And for some reason, uh, the United States Senate doesn't want to do that tough well, work. How many days? 1,118? So you, you update Something that? Something like that. It was right. 1,100, right. yeah. All right. 1,120 days, let's say, round it off. Thanks, Senator. I'm going to talk you. to Andrew. I have, I, I have. Senator, I'm working on it. I'm working on it.